<sighs> All right, today is a new day, and I got a lot of work to do. I need to clean this transmission off because of that aluminum all over the place. All right, so... I just cleaned up all these gasket surfaces, all of the sealant off of them. That hole, there's a little dowel that aligns that to keep it right there. The input shaft spins clockwise and Yeah, it pushes it, it pushes it back in. So I got all this stuff clean. All these gasket surfaces. Cases are clean. All the gears are all clean. Seals in. I got <clears throat> some Honda Bonds. Um, Honda Bond 4, it's semi-drying, like a li liquid gasket type thing. Which is essentially the same thing as the Fuji Bond, which you can get at a Subaru dealer. I think this is like 12 bucks. This is also the same as 3M, like 12, 15. Uh, yeah. And put a small, small amount because all these, all these guys putting a ton of it on and it seeps out and it gets all in your gears. And if it's an engine, it gets all through your oil ports and oil little little bit the only thing this is doing is filling in the minute imperfections within the machine surface on the aluminum casting whether that be an engine or steel casting so kitty so and I put a little and I don't know if this is just me being anal but I noticed they were rusting just a little bit so I put a tiny tiny amount of ADCs on the dowel pins and actually this one I didn't put any on you can kind of see that it's rust that one and that one they're just kind of messy like and steel kind of sticks to aluminum and it corrodes and reacts whatever can't get them apart so hopefully the ADCs kind of keeps it from doing that so I'm gonna put this sealer on here and assemble these cases so I got all the seal on there and I just wanted to point out that there's these little uh, like islands almost I don't know what else to call them and you have to put sealant on them because that seals off coolant from the screw as well as that one even though it doesn't like keep it internally inside the transmission on the outer perimeter there's a screw in the center of that little island and if that leaks it's coming out your screw and it's leaking you have to seal everything and it says on the directions to put it on both surfaces, let it sit for a minute, and then assemble. So I need to do that and shut up. Stop talking. So I got this together. It went together pretty good. And as you can see, it's not the sealant isn't exactly it's smearing out a little bit but not too much and now you can see where my vent lives and it's pretty much it's pretty much like flush with that outer like where the gasket goes I think it's a good spot I'm gonna put these screws in, put this shift uh, no 
rose cone, whatever you want to call it. Put everything together, and this gasket actually was very easy to scrape off. It's only been on there. I haven't scraped it off this yet. But it's only been on there for about a year, so that probably <laughs> explains it. And I might check my backlash again just because the gears are broken in now and I can check it. Probably doesn't need it, but I'll watch the like, Subaru Gears video again and readjust. All right, so I'm about to assemble this case. There are like five 10 mil bolts and then there's a bunch of other eight mils. You can find this manual online easily and they have a little diagram right here and the 8 mil bolts get 25 newtons and the 10 mils get 39 so they basically get 40 and it shows you the order that they need to be torqued. You have to torque this in that order because if you don't you have to bring this down parallel with each other. You can't like torque one. It's like putting on a wheel. It's easy. And it's, they tell you how to do it. They tell you how to assemble this. It's easy. There's two bolts in the center. They're freaking mosquito. 10 mil bolts. That and that, they say to assemble through the other side. I don't know why, because the bolt is technically pulling from both and compress. I don't. I don't know. This one, you cannot get that through this way because the head hangs up on this dipstick tube. So, same with this one. These two just interfere. So you got to put four in the other way. Not a big deal. I don't think, but. For some reason they have them going in one way and another. I thought I'd point that out because some some of you probably care, but <laughs> here we go. <laughs> so in the manual <clears throat> it says to torque all these in that order. Uh, 25 newton meters, 40 newton meters. I always do like a like a little pre-torque. I go in that order and I use the little ratchet because you don't have very much uh, the quarter inch ratchet because you don't have much leverage on the bolts. And I probably torqued them to probably half that just by hand, just kind of snug them up. And that just assures that everything is against each other and you're not just torquing one and torquing the other and it's all in a bind. You bring it down evenly. And another thing I did, this gear. Actually, that one too. Oh, I didn't even think about that. But this, this one, both of them, are in between the cases. Well, I snug these bolts up to pull this shaft in, which is against, which is the ring and pinion the counter shaft. And I snug that up so that was pressed up against these before I brought the cases together. Because if you bring the cases together and this is out. Then that has to slide. I don't know. I I try. That's all we can do. All right, guys. Got this thing all torqued down, all these bolts, everything's all torqued. And I figured I might as well check my backlash just because I'm here. And sometimes I think about it like, I hope that's set right. But I'm just gonna do it again. So I got this plate. You can get any plate, any, and I got this bolt that threads into the holes that hold the front transmission part on. 
just kind of snugged it up I got this magnetic little holder for this indicator and just want to show you this is like the old style that they used to have because now they have a gauge that goes onto the threads onto these on the end of the shaft and then you snug it down with this nut kind of acts as a lock nut for that gauge and then there's a little part they have and you can measure with that gauge that they give you but I don't have that so it's on the tip of this hex and it's at 0 0.0 mil and you need 0.15 so that's zero and I have like 18 maybe Point seventeen to point eighteen. It's supposed to be a point fifteen. And you can see that that's on that nut. And that is the backlash. And you're running a pinion, and you can adjust that by either loosening or tightening this one, and doing the opposite on the other side, and that in turn moves that whole diff over which is against your shaft, pendant shaft, and it tightens the gap up. Well, mine is at like 0 0.17, 0 0.18, it's supposed to be at 0 0.15. I think I might move that over like a half a notch because there's these little lock, hold on a second. There's these little lock like tabs that go on, hold on a second, they go on like right there. All right. So I messed with these adjusters and I tightened it half a turn loosen the other half a turn to try to move the diff because my clearance was a little bit too much but it didn't seem to do much and depending on where you're at on this hex it's so hard to get right because if you move your indicator a little bit one way or the other your measurement it's 0.10 and then it's 0.18 and then it's 13 and then so I'm just keep it where it was it worked fine so but this is how you set it up this is how I set it up and just kind of you can see whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. you can see that's like two below two and a half below and then that goes to 15 so 15 16 17 and a half And that's the free play. As you can see, that's not moving. And this is. It seems like it's a lot. It seems too much. But it works fine like that. And I guess when it heats up, it expands and maybe fills in the clearances. It works. So I'm going to button this thing up. And get this thing going. Clean all the gasket surface off of that nose cone piece, and I'm installing this. I think it's like a torque plate kind of thing. It's got a little, uh, kind of like a counterbore, like a step. And I think it goes, it fits like on this. It kind of locates on there. And this, you can see that wear line. And that rests in this and when you put this on it holds this back and it provides like a thrust like a surface that I can't move necessarily against and pretty sure it would only go on one way if you put it on if you put this on backwards it might fit in there it won't fit snugly on that shaft but I don't think I don't think this piece would close all the way because this isn't the counterbore doesn't allow for that extra little 
you have like a whole gap. So I just put my shift fork in. I don't know how, if that's how it goes, but I noticed that line, which is from the oil, and it, I guess, cleaned that aluminum surface. It's kind of cool looking. You can tell where the oil level is. So oil's here. That's pretty high. That's. It doesn't get up to my vent, which I was kind of thinking of, because oil levels are right here. That's full. And then about half of that's in the oil and it slings. Not on that, because it's blocked. Nothing can sling. And I did look on Super Gear's website, <clears throat> and they, they just, Kitty, Kitty wants to help. But on the Super Gear's website, they just drill like a two mil hole where that vent is, right here, at like an angle. So if oil were to sling out that, it would go in. That's probably fine, just drilling a hole. But I was thinking of water because you drive in the rain and water gets on there from your tires slinging through puddles and water's gonna get on there. If I was to do this again, I would probably try to find a smaller vent. Even though that one doesn't look bad, it's kind of big. But I'm sure they got smaller vents. Maybe like a six mil, like a six millimeter, like a vent ho vent something. It's kind of big. So if you go for this, this was a eighth NPT, which is probably like 11, 12 millimeter. So if you could find something that's like six, that would be prime. You could drill a hole too, but I would drill like small hole the smallest hole I can and so yeah I mean it works it's not hurting anything a little bit ground out the gasket surface is still there no strength is lost and it doesn't leak so yep alright so I got the transmission all cleaned up I probably should have done this before I took it apart but I didn't and I got a bunch of Dawn and just was brushing my life away. And it's still kind of like corroded. Like, I don't know, this aluminum gets nasty looking after it gets a little bit old. And there's like almost nothing you could do about it. But I hit the like WD 40 on the steel parts. came out looking pretty good so the transmission ugh, is done <clears throat> tomorrow tomorrow my parents and brother come back so tomorrow evening so I gotta get this stuff this place like kind of cleaned up and I will swap intake manifolds on the engines put my low profile oil pan on switch my crossover tubes put my clutch assembly all together and hopefully get the engine and trans um, together and ready to go back in but I still gotta build dual port exhausts for or dual port headers for my exhaust so that'll be like next couple days so next weekend I'll probably have this thing back in other than that I'm gonna get a shower and go get some ice cream peace <laughs>